in, in our last lesson in uh, Peter, the last chapter talks about him saying, while I'm in my bodily tent, I will keep reminding you of the things that you already knew. And essentially, whatever ministry you are exposed to, it will be a constant reminder of what Jesus already taught. There are no new doctrines that are going to come up. Any new doctrine is a false doctrine. And so tonight, I would like to uh, talk about uh, the name of Jesus. Say the name of Jesus. We are, we are given that name, and some Christians doesn't even know the power of that name. When we say, in Jesus' name, for example, uh, people think it's a magic word. We turn it into a religion. But it's not. When we were studying the Gospel of John, I mentioned to you that we have everything that we ask for because we are asking for things that are related to the Great Commission. Okay? Now, there's the other side to it. Anything that you ask, God will give it to you in His name. When you ask anything that pertains to salvation, okay? The name of Jesus means what? The Lord saves. Saves from what? From sin and its effects. Okay, from sin and its, its effects. People, people think we're just delivered from sin. No, even from the effects of sin. There's a theory that I'm studying right now. I've been asking my kids if they know it. Uh, James Joel is the one who Googled it right away. But uh, if I finish making this research, it's an exciting study that I'm uh, doing on, on how God answers prayers. And there's a science behind it, okay? I cannot quite reveal it yet because I'm just in the beginning of my study. But uh, the name of Jesus becomes very powerful in that sort of thing. God told Adam after he was created to name the animals on earth. But let me ask, ask, ask you this question. Uh, when did Eve... I will not answer it, okay? Just, I'll just throw it to you. When did, <laughs> maybe I'll answer it when I do the group meeting with this, January, this February. Is it 28? Where's David? Is it, is it 20? Yeah. Uh, tw 29? 29? This is not leap year, right? 28, yeah. Uh, I'll give you an assignment, okay? When did Eve knew she sinned? And when did she knew she was naked? Okay. That, that's a good question. I'm being tempted to answer it right now, but I will not answer it, okay? Because this Sunday I'll be teaching on discipline and training. So I'll be disciplining myself not to answer it. Well, I, I've been studying these things because I was just reading it right. Uh, the Bible says, whoa, when in the world did she find out she was naked? I never asked myself that question before. <laughs> But this time I ask it, and I like what I saw, okay? So, that's, that's, that's a segue, that's a free, okay? So God told Adam to name the animals on earth, and whatever he calls them, that's what they are. And now we, we so some people are writing that the names that we gave, we give to animals today, is still related to how Adam named these animals. How they found out, I don't know. But they say when they were tracing the transmission of the name of animals, there were little changes, but it maintained the same meaning. Meaning, Adam started calling animals by how he sees them. Okay? Now, given this, Adam knew that none of those animals eat meat. Right? They're all, none of them are carnivorous. So right now we say tiger or lion pertaining to this very ferocious animal, but is that how Adam saw them? I'll tell you this, he didn't see them that way, but he still called them tiger, lion. So there is a different understanding of Adam 
when he calls that animal a lion, and there's a different understanding when he calls that animal a tiger. Because now we call somebody who is ferocious a tiger or a tigress, okay? Especially if you are married to somebody who, uh, who, will, who will kill you, then you call her a tigress. But that is not how Adam looks at it because all of them were not carnivorous. So there must be a, a reason why Adam starts calling them the way they are calling them. And we are misdefining them now. So Adam saw something and the first thing he will do is describe it by giving it a name. The name becomes the description. When <clears throat> ancients named their children, it was also according to how they perceive their children. For example, <clears throat> uh, Jacob is the one who uh, catches after the hill, who grasps the hill. And we call it the supplanter. And some people are trying to sanitize that name. It's because when the, when the, uh, the midwife, oh, I don't know who, who uh, assisted her in, in giving birth, when the midwife uh, saw the, 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 cha the children, somebody was grasping the heel of uh, Esau. And the reason why his name is Esau is because he's red. Okay, so even then you will find that uh, maybe Esau looks, looks more like an Indian, uh, a red race than anything else because the purity of the race was still high. And so, can, can you imagine this, this, uh, Jacob was uh, this uh, Isaac was capable of having a red child, you see? That's why he called him Esau and he called him Jacob. So how they see their children. Now, the ancients also, in literatures, says that in a lot of tribes, they don't know how to name their children. So the child is born... And they don't know what the name is. And so there is a cartoon. Uh, it's an ugly cartoon show that my children watch. <clears throat> but uh, the name of the children is by the number. Remember that show? You don't. One, two, three, four. Okay? So that is how they will name their children. The first child, the second child, until the child begins to reveal his character. And the moment the child begins to manifest his character, then the parents name the child. So it's very common for a child not to be named uh, for some time. Even the Chinese uh, do, the same, do, do the same thing. There, therefore, naming today begin, be, begin to become a lost art. And so we, uh, we name our children now without purpose. Okay, for example... Before, in the Philippines, there is no middle name. Well, the middle name is the maiden name of your mother. But uh, it's a given name, a middle name. Here, they, they have a second name. So a lot of Filipinos, in, including, including us, our children begin to have a second name. And uh, maybe all of you who have children born here, you gave your children a second name because it's Uso. But some of us name our children without even knowing or having a hint of what the will of God is. And so we name them uselessly because we don't perceive God's hand on their lives. As I told you when I name my children, uh, it's how I, I perceive and pray for them. My wife was uh, insisting on other names, but I refuse. She wants... She wants to name my kids like after her father or grandfather. I said, no way. It's not going to happen. And then perhaps she was baiting me. She said, let's name them after your father. I said, no way. I don't want any of my children to be like my father. Why? Because he was a drunkard and a gambler. Why would I want my children to be like their grandfather on my side? So I refused that. Okay? And so she said, why don't you call one of them Junior. I refuse also. I don't, I don't want them to duplicate me. There's enough of me already, you know. So uh, I, I thought I should, I should pray to the Lord as to uh, what, what their characters will be as they grow up. 
and that's how I named them. Okay? And so that is, uh, but, but most of us, uso. Kaya nga meron tayong mga anak na, well, we don't know where they get their name from. Maybe it's an American name and we don't even know what that American name, but, but it looks important, you know. Uh, alam mo sa atin, mukhang tati yung pangalan anak mo. You know, so we, we just name them uselessly. When we do that, uh, then we uh, forsook one of the most important responsibilities that God gave to man. And that is naming their children. When we started this church, now I have an understanding of this, so we went through this process. When we named this church, I asked the uh, first leaders, what, what name, let's pray about the name, and what do you think the name of our church should be? You can tell they did not pray because the name that they are giving lacks prayer. You know, they they just they just keep giving common names. The Grace of the Lord Ministry. Well, I have a problem with that because there's a lot of ministries that is the Grace of the Lord and they went nowhere. So meaning they missed the Grace of the Lord. You know, so uh, I am aware of some ridiculous names that churches uh, gave to them. There is a there is a church. One of my students. It's called the Warm Bread Fellowship. You know, you know, uh, Sister Jo Salisipan? Uh, she know the church, and I think she went to the church. It's called the Warm Bread. And it's because in Saudi Arabia, it's a code name, I was told. Uh, I don't know how true it is, but I was told, because I asked the pastor, why, why did you call your church Warm Bread? Because my pastor poked fun at the name. Because he was saying, some churches give name to their churches without thinking. And he said, I know why he did this. Said, and some churches named their churches Warm Bread. And he said, in the pulpit, he said, what is that? Hot Pandisal? You know? <laughs> so so the, the, uh, my student got offended. And so talk, talk to me. The reason it's Warm Bread is because in, in Saudi, it's forbidden to have fellowship. So they, they, they were asking the Lord how, what, what the code name will be. And because Jesus is the bread of life. So when somebody asked them, uh, not necessarily an authority, but a Muslim, where are you going? And they say, we're, we're going to go uh, get some warm bread. Yeah, it means the word of the Lord. Okay, so in Saudi Arabia, it has a meeting. But, but in the Philippines, my pastor didn't get it, so he thought it's a pandisal. You know? So I, uh, I was asking the Lord, and, and the passage that God gave me was Revelation 5.5. 5. The Lion of Judah, Judah is worthy to open the scroll. And so right there, I, I begin to know what kind of character our church should have. Uh, in order, that's why I minister the way, the way I minister. Because God, I believe, wants to raise a group of aggressive people in this church. Not, not, uh, not pusong mamon, you know. He doesn't want to raise kittens in this house or puppies. He wants to raise lions. Whether we will be obedient to that or not, time will tell. That's why, that's why I, uh, I cherish the thought of having all of you having such aggressive and ferocious personalities. I'm yet to see most of it, but... Uh, if one of you is lalamia, lalamia, I just say, it looks like a kitten, you know. It doesn't look like uh, a lion's heart. But uh, that is what is in my heart. That's why we are called Lion's Heart. And it turned out to be a good name, you know, for me at least. Uh, you say, well, Pastor, sir, I don't like the name. Who cares? You know, that's what God gave me, so that's what we're having, okay? Now, uh, therefore, when you, when you uh, begin to have children, a family, when you embark on a project, when you have work, sometimes we don't know how to name these things. And when we don't know how to name these things, a lot of times we curse even our own work, even our own families. Can you imagine a child or a spouse going home saying, ay, talaga tong malas tong bahay na to. So you call your house uh, miss un unfortunate. You just name your house. You just name your house an unfortunate house. 
Well, I call my name, I, I, I call my house blessed. Okay? So I, I, we are so blessed. We, we receive blessings that uh, we don't even expect. Anne was, uh, got a uh, call today. We have a blessing. Uh, got, my wife got a call today. You know how, how two years ago, my, my, my wife did not keep me awake while I was driving. <laughs> Remember that? So I fell asleep behind the wheels. And so we had an accident. The Lord, the Lord preserved us all. And, and the insurance coverage was low. So I, I paid for some of it. And every time I receive a call from all state, I will not even answer. They'll leave messages for over a year. I will not answer. I'm just upset because they did not uh, cover everything. I, I paid for some. Well, today my wife answered the phone call because when her phone rings and she is around, when the phone beckons her, it, it's really magnetic, you know. She really wants to answer it. Well, it turned out it's uh, our insurance. Yeah. And she was trying to give her money. Well, you know, you offer my wife money. What will she do? Sure. But if you offer my wife money, she will not only receive what you're offering. She will try to double it. And so she doubled it. And the guy on the other line is <laughs> foolish enough to agree. So she got it doubled. So. She received some money today, and so I told her, Happy Valentine's. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, uh, we, we receive blessings like that and throughout, throughout the years because our house is blessed. I, don't call, my, I call my children blessed. I, uh, I, I call them successful. I don't call them failures. Now, some of you, you grew up in a house like mine, growing up, wherein you are, you are called by others failures. So they are naming you already. Yeah. Naming you already. That's why I don't like the idea in my house people saying, we're, we're, we're like the best, us. we're playboys. I don't like that because none of my kids are. Yeah. I, I don't like that. I hate that. Because my family is not cursed. That's why my, my kids are straight up uh, faithful, that's how I call them. Yeah. Because you have to be very careful how you name your children. Now, if you name your children saying, oh, my kids are just like, like going to be, you know, teenagers like everybody else, you just cursed your children. You just did. That's why, and I have taught this before, that's why when our children live a cursed life, we can expect it. Because we name them that way. Uh, you know how I testify that all the time my wife applied for a job. She will always be accepted. She was the one who turns to, she knows how to make money. Uh, I do that on purpose. She lacks confidence a lot of times. But I will call her the way I prayed about who my wife is going to be. So naming is extremely important. The, so, so the way you guys are working for, for a company, do not curse your companies. You know, Filipinos will say, peste talaga tong trabaho kong to. You just curse your company. Yeah, don't do that. Because that is God's means of provi providing for you. You should be naming good things. That's why now, America is, is in, in a lot of trouble because our leaders in power are naming this country lies. Remember Obama, she, he called the U.S. the largest Muslim nation. I don't know where in the world he, he, just, he just cursed this nation. He just called this nation the largest Muslim country in the world, op opposite of what the origin of this country is. It is a Judeo-Christian background, you see. So very important. Uh, especially if you are head of your family, very important that, that you, that you re, uh, recapture. We have to redeem this. We have to recapture this. And we speak it in faith. Because certainly Adam doesn't have 
the full knowledge yet of those, what those animals are. But he was already naming them. Naming them is equivalent to Adam blessing them. Okay? Blessing them. So now, God calls us that we are going to be a blessing. And the promise to Abraham is he will be a blessing to the nations. How does Abraham bless those around him? By pronouncing things. By naming them. Okay? So, Melchizedek blessed Abraham and named him uh, after God. Meaning, the blessing of Abraham is from God. And so that's how he does it. And so when we begin to fellowship truly with one another, and we want to be a blessing to each other, we begin to name our, uh, each other according to God's will. I, I find doing this, especially to parents who feel uh, their children are not up to what they were expecting. Well, it doesn't matter if they are not up to what you are expecting because your expectations most of the time, if not 100% of the time, our expectations of our children are actually very low. But the expectations of the Lord on our children is pretty high, super high. The moment you begin to discern and find out that the expectation of God on our children is pretty high, then let's agree with God, you see? If you, if you have been paying attention to how I teach about how our children should be taking care of their parents, honoring their parents, being respect, respectful, fearing God, growing in the knowledge of the Lord, that is God's expectation because he said, I want godly children. But some of, some of the parents that we have here in this house have already cursed their children. Oh, pastor, you just curse your children. But I will keep calling them out and teaching them, guiding them on the way that God calls them. And so if God calls them successful, obedient, respectful of the elders, that's how we should call them. That's the power of naming. In John chapter 16, verse 23. John 16, 23. In that day, you will not ask me anything. Truly I tell you, anything you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive so that your joy may be complete. Now that's a powerful passage. Several decades ago, I think this was in the, uh, in the 70s or late 60s, I think 70s though. Copeland said he was uh, flying uh, above the, uh, what do you call it? the Eagle Mountain. His property is, is part of the mountain. He's got a runway, he's got an airplane hangar. It's like a little airport. Actually, his property has what you may call as a local municipal airport. Okay, so he said he was hovering over it, waiting to land, and he said from his radio, and this is his testimony, I will not contest it, from his radio, he heard an announcement. You are now flying over the revival capital of the world. He said he heard it from, from his radio on his airplane. And he said, where in the world did it come from? He realized that the Lord was speaking to him. He said, God wants this to become the revival capital of the world. Ever since, from the 70s, he has been declaring that uh, the Eagle Mountain International Church is the revival capital of the world. That's, now, it doesn't matter if their attendance drops or they, there is COVID. Every time, he, he'll just keep saying, this is the revival capital of the world. You see, he's naming it after the vision. So it's important that uh, we, we, uh, we look at our family, the one that we, are, that, that we are building. What do you think God, God's purpose for that family is? What do you think is God's purpose for your children or your, or your family? And begin calling them like that, okay? Because then we are taking advantage of the power that God gave to us here. Let me read it again. That day you will, you will not ask me anything, because it's going to go. Truly I tell you, anything you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. So part of the completion of our joy is answered prayers. 
So can you imagine if you are praying and the Lord is not, and you are not receiving answer to your prayers? Your joy is not complete. Okay? That day is now. Now, had the disciples ever asked Jesus for something in the past? The answer is yes. Obviously. When there was no food, Jesus sent them home. He's asking them. Where will we find food? He's asking them. Hey, what will I do with this? He's asking them. So he's always asking them. But the time is about to come for him to leave. And so Jesus said, when I leave, you will not ask me for anything. Now remember, we are the body of Christ. He is the head. Jesus never asked himself for anything when he was here on earth. He didn't say, myself, would you please do a miracle? You know? He didn't ask himself. He always asked the Father. And that's the pattern. He is the head of the church. We are the body. So the way he behaved is a pattern. It's an example. That's how we should behave. If Jesus asked the Father when he needs something, we should also ask the Father. That he were, that's what he was alluding to. So we will have needs. And so it's, uh, it's very, it's very uh, uh, noticeable how disobedient a lot of us are when we pray. You know why we started, Jesus, would you please give me this? We were never told Jesus, by, by God to pray by Jesus to pray like that. He didn't say pray. In that day, you will ask me nothing. Is, is that what I read? Go to your text again. In that day, you will not ask me anything. That's what it says, right? But most of us, we keep asking Jesus. Well, Jesus said, in that day, you will not ask me anything. Why do we keep asking him then? Right? The funny thing is, we even know, don't know, Jesus Please bless me and do this in Jesus' name. Who is the Jesus that you are talking to then? Because you are talking to Jesus in Jesus' name. So we, really, we are really not mindful of how we are praying. In that day, you will ask me nothing. So how, what are we going to ask Jesus in that day? Nothing. When is that day? Today. Because he's no longer here. In that day, you will ask me nothing. If you ever ask Jesus something... That's wrong. But you will ask the Father in my name. Whom do we ask today? So why do you keep asking Jesus sometimes? I hear it even when you pray for the food. Jesus, bless this food. Why are you asking him to do that? He already said, in that day you will ask me nothing. Right? Is that complicated or simple? I'll simplify it even more. <laughs> well, I don't know how to do it <laughs> even more simple, okay? But, but in that day, you will ask me nothing. So today, we ask our Father, what is Jesus doing? He's, he's setting an example. I am the Son. You are my body. You are the sons or the children of God. The way I ask the Father is the way you will ask the Father. So he asked the Father. Okay? He's the representative man. So now when we ask the Father in his name, it is just like Jesus asking it. Because we are recognizing the headship of Jesus. It just, it happens in, in, in the family, you know. My kids will ask uh, their mother for something, and if they don't get it, they'll ask me. Papa, can we have this? That was before. We, we learned their technique. And so I will say, yeah, you can. And they'll go to, to uh, my wife. Well, Papa approved. Well, what can she do? You know, and so my wife went, got upset. So now they have a different technique. Yeah. They find out who is it among the kids whom Ann is most favorable to. You know? like, like, for example, if DJ is disobedient that day, you don't want to quote DJ. The more my wife will be upset. You know? So she, she, they will determine that day who is it that... <laughs> that uh, is most favorable to my wife's eyes. If, if they think Joel is most favorable, they will tell, Joel, Joel, ask mama. You know? What are they doing? They are asking in his name. Okay? So we are asking in the name of Jesus. Why? Because God says, he already declared it, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. We are asking in the name of the one on whom the Father is most pleased. Now remember, he became our elder brother. Um, we are, he is the head, we are his body. 
when they were asking Jesus a lot of things, Jesus is readily giving it to them because, again, he is the representative. But now he's living. They will now duplicate what Jesus was doing. That is our responsibility today. We should not be praying useless prayer. We, we talk the, what the Father wants is for you and I to develop a very deep relationship with him, a father-child relationship. And I'll tell you, it is very sweet to have a father-child relationship. One of the, uh, uh, well, the, 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 the wife of my kuya uh, was making an observation because I, I don't harbor bitterness in my heart against my parents. So uh, she noticed whenever she is home, whenever my brother bring, him ho bring her home, that there is a certain unique closeness that I have with my father. I can play with my father. And I'll tell you this, there was a certain time in my relationship with my father that if I ask him for, for something that he asked, he will give it. In fact, my mother noticed that my father was buying a polo shirt almost every week. There was a time. She was no longer a drunkard. She was buying a polo almost every week. And, and my mother realized later it's because we have the same size. Uh, especially when I became an intern pastor, you know, your money is short. So I will just look at our little closet. And whatever shirt my father has, it fits me. If I like something, I just wear it. And my mother says, I know now why your father is buying a lot. It's for you. It's not for him. I mean, he doesn't need some of those polo shirts. He's cargador for goodness sake. Why do you need those? <laughs> you know? But he was buying them actually for me. And later on, when I became an intern, I was wearing a lot of them. And my father loves it. Because a loving father would love to give to a, a child that he is most pleased, whatever he has. You see? And, and, and that's why, uh, children, I'm, I'm giving you a tip. You want what your parents have? Be pleasing to your parents. It will be a foolish parent if you are most displeasing to them and they give you everything that you want. And that, that's, that's a foolish parent. A wise parent will bless those who pleases them the most. Okay? Even God uh, lives that way or exercises that. Now in Mark chapter 16, starting on verse 17, and these signs will accompany those who believe, who believe in my name. They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes. If they should drink a deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. That is still a process that I never, I never stop meditating on. Do you know, I, we are not supposed to have food poisoning. You know, biblically, we are not supposed to have diarrhea. Yeah. yeah. How many of you here had diarrhea? Don't raise your hands. <laughs> Keep it to yourself, you know. But we are not even supposed to have that because they will... If they drink any deadly thing, it will not even ha harm them. But it is still, uh, there, there are some food that we eat that is still hurt us. I mean, there is a point, Brother Willie has a point. He said, these missions, eat what, what is presented to you. But, but I'm, when Brother Willie said that, then he testified that one time he was preaching and there he kicked in and he called the song leader, lead, and she, he ran out the bathroom. And actually, he doesn't like their bathroom. We have, we have ministered there together, and he will tell me, I need to use the bathroom. I said, I'll go. He said, I'll go to the, to the hotel. I said, well, I don't want to use it. I said, why? Well, it's dirty. And he has to run to it, you know, because of diarrhea. But he, he prayed. He, he gave thanks for the food. The Bible says it's sanctified in prayer. How come you get diarrhea? Meaning we, have, we are not fully digesting the meaning of that passage. We are not supposed to have diarrhea, guys. Because I, I reckon that, that there are no pagans here. We, are, we always give thanks. We always receive the food that we receive with thanksgiving. Am I right? 
Do we always receive our food with Thanksgiving? Are you sure about it? Well, if we do receive our food with Thanksgiving, how come when we have a feast, we don't eat all of it? If we are already grateful, I don't like that. I thought you were thankful. I don't like that. If, if you are thankful, right, DJ? Mm -hmm. Especially if DJ do the prayer, and then I don't like that. Why are you thankful then? <laughs> Did you ever think about that, DJ? You need to repent right now. <laughs> <laughs> How can you be thankful and reject it? You see, I'm, 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 ta I'm thinking out loud because we need, we need to get this thing done because we are not supposed to be uh, food poisoned. And listen, once Jesus is no longer around physically, which is actually now, we can ask our Father now in the name of Jesus. What is the name of Jesus? One who saves his people from their sins and its effects. Look at this. They, I want you to analyze it. They will cast out demons. Why, why are demons rampant? It's the, result, it's the effect of sin. Okay? They will speak with new tongues. Why? What happened because of sin? There was Babel, the confusion of tongues. This is to counter that. Okay? If they pick up snakes, it will not harm them. A snake is the picture of Satan. Satan will not harm you. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Why? Because sickness is the direct and indirect result of sin. If you will notice, all of these items is what Jesus came here for. He came to save his people from their sin and from its effects. So when we are ministering on the sick, when we are ministering this way, we are actually doing an extension of what and who Jesus is. That's why it's amazing when some people don't believe in healing anymore. Why won't you believe in healing? This is one of the reasons why Jesus came. To save us from our sins and its effects. And sickness is a direct and indirect result of sin. Okay? That's why we... Well, that's why it bugs me that some of you are still claiming your, your family sickness. Yeah? Well, my mom was sick with this at the age of 50, so I'm going to sick with this. Why are you claiming that? Jesus saved you from your sin and the effects of sin. Are you listening to me? Amen. But you see, now we are, we are beginning to understand, we are mouthing things that we don't actually understand. When, when uh, I married my wife, she was 30 years old, she was rushing to have children. And I think because according to her, in her family, the moment you read something like the age of 28 or 29, uh, 30 especially, it's a dangerous pregnancy. And that's, a, I, I told her, Anne, it's, and this is what I tell her, I said, Anne, uh, it's not an issue of whether you're going to have a child. It's an issue of how many children you're going to have. Because we are, my, my family, we are, we are big families, so I never have doubt I will have children. I don't know why, but I, don't, I never have doubt that I will have children. She has doubts because according to her, at a certain age, it's uh, dangerous for her to, to be pregnant. That's what she said. That's how she named herself. She said, at this age, it's a dangerous pregnancy. That's how she named herself. I keep I keep rebutting that. I said, Anne, it's not the question of, of having a child. It's having children. Guess what? All her pregnancies are dangerous. She keep calling herself like that. Yeah. All her pregnancy, from Joseph to Joel, especially with John. Because John is a clown, you know, even from the womb. She keeps circling around so until <laughs> power to the people, you know. Uh, so until, until finally the, that thing, you know, this, it's a duplicate of what she did, he did here. <laughs> but the umbilical cord wrapped around him and so he came out black and blue. And he was not about, he, and he did not shed off that color. Uh, it's the effect of uh, his personality. 
but uh, but Anne, she had difficulty in whole, her pregnancy because that's how she calls herself. Yeah. She said, and and I have no appreciation when when to this day from time to, she, the whole family now rebukes her. From time to time, she will quote her family sickness. Well, did, why in the world did Jesus save you? Huh? He saves you from sin and its effect. I don't care if your mom is diabetic or, or have a problem with cancer at this age. You have been redeemed from that curse. Are you listening? You have been redeemed from the curse of family sickness. And, and because Jesus becomes your savior, now he has saved you from your sins and its effect, including sickness. So they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But if you claim it, you name yourself that. You know. You name yourself that. I was, uh, Brother Willie is recommending her, his friend, a pastor from Indiana. I never have him preach here. You know, that fat, fat guy. Uh, I will not give you the name because I may be by accident, she may, he may look at the video and then sue us, you know. But he is not double our size. He is quadruple our size. I brought him to uh, that restaurant, Red Lobster. I'm telling you, the Red Lobster that we ate turned even more red after they saw him. Uh, he, has, he has a couple of orders. And listen to this. Not only does he have a couple of orders, I cannot finish the whole thing. He asked for my plate. <laughs> he, he will be a good guest for our church when we have feasts. But he claimed this, he said. He said, my family have, have big bones. And I told Brother Willie, I have never really seen a fat skeleton. <laughs> have, you, have you ever seen a... You know, in biology, we, have, we draw this skeleton. Have you ever seen a fat skeleton? No. So I don't receive that. I just, I just don't receive that. So what am I saying? You better call yourself, start naming yourself the way God names you. You know, when I started ministering here, some people doesn't like me. And so they say, well, pastor will say he's not a pastor. He's a teacher. Whenever they say he's a teacher, you know what I say? Amen to that. That's how God calls me. He calls me a teacher. He called me to be. And so I'm, there's no shame with that. And so the more they call me a teacher, the more they are confessing what God says, the more I can teach better. Because I am a teacher. Well, of course, they are ignorant of the scripture, so they don't know what that means. But I'm not. You know why? Because I'm a teacher. And even people recognize that. And I like it when they say, well, pastor is a teacher. Because the more they are blessing me, because they are calling me according to how God calls me. Okay? So, that is the power of naming. And even here in the Great Commission, in my name, they shall do the following things. Now, let's, let's make that statement even simpler. Jesus, when did Jesus give the Great Commission? Huh? Before he ascended, before he left earth, right? And he was doing these things. Why was Jesus doing these things? Because his name is Jesus. Meaning he will save his people from their sins and its effects. What are we called to do now? In my name. They shall save the people with me. You see, we are called to bring the deliverance that Jesus brings to the people. Why? Because he is the head, we are his We have not claimed that yet. Yeah, we keep saying in the, first, in the second century, all of these gifts uh, uh, disappeared. Well, did Jesus disappear? So can you imagine if you are a Christian and in your family who is not saved, at the age of 50, you, are, you begin to have this sickness. Then you are claiming what Jesus is telling you to free the people from. Are you following me? 
as a representative of Jesus, he said, I want you to go and save the people with me using my name. Okay? Cast out demons, be united, speak in tongues, okay? Lay hands on the sick, and they these are the effects of sin. How can you deliver people from the effects of sin if its effects are not removed from you? If you are claiming its effects, that becomes hypocrisy. That becomes double-minded. You see, you, you keep claiming sickness on yourself from your family, and yet you are telling people God delivered them from their sins and its effects. That's hypocrisy. That's double-mindedness. And you will not receive anything from God. That's why you have to be committed to the fact that you are part of the body of Christ. He is Jesus, one who saves his people from their sins and its effects. You are his body, the body of Jesus who saves his people from their sins and its effects. You see, this basic thing we are ignoring. And so even in this house, it's very lamentable because I hear uh, some of you claiming your family sickness. I don't know what business you have claiming your family sickness. Because Jesus saved you from your sins and its effects. You can live a sickness-free life. You, you, we, are, we are growing in this. We have to uh, search this even more. And maybe in the, in the near future, I have to teach this healing teaching again. Because we are forgetting this. But we don't have to live under the curse of sickness. Uh, you know, don't, don't, don't call yourself sick names like Malon and... Uh, What's the other one? Killian. Meaning pining or dying or something. Can you imagine Elimelech and Naomi calling their son whining or dying or something? You know? but, but, but sometimes that's how we call ourselves. Well, my, my parents have this sickness at the age of 45. I'm going to have it. I just feel it. It's this age now. Well, Enjoy it then. But Jesus named you healed already. By whose stripes you were healed. So you were healed. That's how Jesus calls you. I, I thank God that uh, growing poor we could not claim any sickness because we don't go to the doctor. Yeah. If, if we have, you can't even say you have a headache. Because if I tell my father I have a headache, they'll just say, because you wake up late and he will, he will knock our head. Stand up and sweat. How do you feel? I'm okay. You don't want your head to be, to be. I'm telling you, I can remember the first headache I had when I was in second year high school. Yeah. I don't know what headache is until I was second year high school. Because at that time I was missing meals because we don't have money for books. So I was going to the library and I was not eating my lunch. Of course you can have a headache. If you don't eat. But I never knew headache unless, until I was. My, my classmates at elementary will be saying, I'm having headache. I'm saying, what in the world is that? You know, people say, I'm dizzy. I don't know what being dizzy means. Until I was second year high school. Uh, and I wish, I wish I never learned how to be dizzy, you know. Because growing up, I never, I never know what headache is until I was second year high school. Yeah. And some of you here, you don't even have a headache. You're claiming it, especially with this uh, COVID thing. Uh, the foolishness of CPS, you know. They have this, how, you, how do you call it? Mental, mental day. You are given, the students are foolishly given so many, how do you call it, mental day? So for, for so many days, you can go cuckoo, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to go to school today. Why? I'm crazy today. And CPS is great, and, and, and students are claiming it. This is my mental retardation day. <laughs> why, why, claim that, why claim that garbage, you know? We are being taught by the society how to name ourselves failures, sickly, and dying. Uh, can you imagine, some of you even believe this. They say, well, the life expectancy of Americans are now longer. Who said that? 
the life expectancy is already set by the Lord. 120. And nobody was able to reach it yet. And some people claim, that's what Genesis is. Right? But Moses says 70 or 80. Well, because they are rebellious. That's why he said, if you're obedient, you're going to go 80. But then he didn't die at the age. 120 is what's set by the Lord. Remember after, after what? After the, is that after the flood? Before the flood? Before the flood, it's 120. 120. Has any of your family here ever lived to be 120? And yet, we believe these foolish Americans saying the life expectancy of Americans is 73. Who says 73? It's 120. God always said, but now they, they, and now they say the life expectancy of the Filipinos has already improved. It's now, I think, 65 or something. <laughs> My goodness, I'm already 61. You know? Yeah. Uh, we, we, they keep naming these things, and all it is is they say they are conditioning you to die at 73 so that you cannot claim your social security. Why? They already stole it. So the moment you die, they have no more obli obligation over you. But God already named our life expectancy. And so we are now agreeing with the government. Why are we agreeing with the government? They keep, they keep saying global warming. Well, the Bible says that this world is going to be destroyed by intense heat. Of course there will be global warming. You, know? you think they can fight that? No. They, Environmental change, global uh, weather, there will always be changes from, from the very beginning. There will always be changes. But this earth is going to be destroyed by fire. And none, none, Al Gore will not be able to save it. Okay? I don't care how many trillions or quadrillions, if they can come with that amount, they will, they will earmark for this. This world will be, will be destroyed by intense heat. God already calls it. And it is going to happen. That's the power of naming. So that passage we read from Mark 16 is what you can call as the power of attorney that we have in my name. It's the power of attorney. When you're giving the power of attorney, you can decide. We can decide. Jesus said this. Uh, you can, in some sense, you can even forgive those and they will be released. That's, that's some power. And by the way, we are already exercising that in the legal system. A judge can be very foolish, but he can throw out evidences. You realize that? Why? Because the judge has been given that power by the American people by way of election or by way of appointment. Can you imagine a the citizens can understand the law and the judge can say, well, that is the meaning of this. And they can change it. This is the power of attorney right there. You see? And some of us are changing the meaning of the scriptures. Well, you change the meaning of the scriptures, then the power of the scriptures will not be effective on you. Okay? The moment you say, well, miracle no longer happen, then it will not happen to you. You just call it. You curse yourself. But we need to get back to this. Again, in, uh, in, in Matthew 28, Verse 18, Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And, and, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. You know what, what we have been given the power of attorney to teach the gospel? And, and the Bible says this, teaching them to obey everything. We... The authority that we have, the authority that I have and you have is this, to teach the unadulterated word and call people to obey it. Teaching them to obey. You teach them to obey, not to disobey. So can you imagine some churches now are teaching to disobey? When they begin to say that LGBTQ is okay, they are teaching people to disobey. Where Paul calls this, uh, says uh, that we are called to call men to the obedience of the faith. That's my calling. Okay? That's the calling of every minister. We are only authorized to... So when I teach you, obey your parents in the Lord, honor your parents, I have that authority and it will generate power in your spirits. Whether you will obey or not, it's up to you. But if I say, 
it's okay for same sex to be, uh, to be married. I don't have that authority. What will happen then? The demonic power will walk in because no preacher on earth, not even, not even the Pope or Cardinal, no preacher on earth is given the authority teaching them to obey everything I have taught you, I have commanded you. So the only authority that I have as a preacher of the gospel is to teach what Jesus taught. Therefore, as a preacher, if I begin to teach opposite of what he taught, then I am releasing a different power. That's demonic power. Not God's power. Okay? So I can call you to the obedience of the faith. I have that anointing. I have that authority. But I don't have the authority to say, you children, you can decide for yourself and you can rebel against your parents. The moment I say that, now I'm allowing a demonic power to operate in your life. Or to have free access to the assembly. That I will not do. Okay? That's what you call as the power to use that name. I want, I want you guys to start uh, thinking about this and operating this. Be mindful when you pray. Be mindful when you claim family curses. Because you have been delivered from that already. Amen? Uh, I, I don't walk after the tradition of my family. Yeah, they have so many traditions. I abandon them all. Uh, you know, my, my parents, they did not go to school. Uh, I became the most educated uh, in my clan to this day. None, none of them had surpassed my education. I went against that. The Lord is blessing me. I have, I have good children. Uh, some of them lament the kind of children that were born from their families. That's my family life. They lament. Some of them got saved and became preachers. But uh, I did not walk after the tradition of my family. And I will never allow my wife to teach my kids to walk after the children of her family. Because any tradition that is opposite of the word of the Lord is cursed. Are you listening? It's cursed. The only power that we have been given to teach is the word of the Lord. And to call men to the obedience of the faith. We should never violate that. Amen? Amen. Well, I did not finish the introduction, so we'll continue that next week. Amen? It's 9.04, so let's all stand. Praise God. Hallelujah.